Yo, what you know, it's your friendly neighborhood hero, one hero to be exact, and today I bring you episode zero of Indie Heroes. Heroes is going to be a series where I particularly like to highlight different independent creative comics and projects that I've actually found on the internet that I've purchased myself or that I've actually backed to help get funded through Kickstarter and sorts. But before I get into more of those, I wanted to do a takeoff edition episode talking more about my inspirations and where I'm coming from with my whole presence on the internet and me even wanting to do something like this. So I'm an independent comic book creator and writer and I publish self-publish my own story which is called infinite the journey it's a manga inspired adventure where it follows ko who is on the journey of a lifetime to become a guardian to help protect his world from a fallen guardian who looks to take over and pretty much put things in his own perspective the story started for me i want to say early 2011 when i started writing and even having the concept in my mind and really trying to figure out and sort my mind out to see if it was something that i really could do I didn't know if it was something that I could even attempt to do because I beforehand thought it was such a massive feat, something that I never thought in a million years I'd be able to do. I could write behind the scenes and leave it there. I tried writing music, but there was nothing really more that really came from it when I actually pursued it. So I didn't know where I was going. But also before that happened, I actually ran into um, the inspiration that even launched me on the path of creating my own first self-published webcomic slash manga slash comic book. And it was when I came across two creators that really I thought were professionals, but when I found out they were independent, it really just blew my mind and opened me up to the world of what I now know as webcomics as well. The first creator was Carsifona's creator, Shillin. She made a story called Carsifona, where it's a story following in that world, Velase Visrin, who is also a practitioner of magic, where now the practice of magic is forbidden. And basically magic is so deeply tied into her roots that it's something that she couldn't do, but she did not know it was going to take her on this grand journey of finding her family lineage and also just experiencing the world firsthand being Carsifona and also having the world's number one assassin Blackbird actually coming for you as well. That's what Carsifona is by Shillin. Then next up you have Samurai Genji by the creator Din Money aka Jeff Trebs who also just recently launched and successfully was able to fund his Kickstarter for his video game visual novel called The Faulty Apprentice. Samurai Genji is a story where in that world you eat the flesh of man and you you gain very strong powers so everybody's on this kick for it after this world war happened right before the story is set up and then you have samurai genji who is searching for the white fox who is also an apprentice or member of the old lion and his regime who pretty much run things around there it's just pretty much one of those classic samurai tales and it leads to that path and it was really cool to experience so basically i come across these two wonderfully looking comics and i'm just like there's no way these things are not published by some mega publishing house or anything like that because I was such a greenhorn back then when I started and like I said yeah I found out they were not published they were independents people that just decided to wake up and do what I did the only thing different is that they could draw and I couldn't which is something that I struggle with anyway because I would love to be able to do art and I would love as a creative person be able to complete a comic book with my own style of art but to my own fault and flaw I don't have the patience to even want to muster up the amount of time and practice to get to where I want to. I know I could start. I know people would appreciate the participation badge and give that to me for even attempting to do it. But I've always been a person that when I do something, I want to do it right. And I know I know what my vision would be for my own art style, but I just can't do it. I would need too much time and that's too much time taken away from what I can do best right now, which is to write and be able to put that vision into the hands of another master teller and let them tell the story with me visually combining two powers into one plus I like working with other people I like helping other people I like being able to help inspire and create with other people which is what I got to do for those previous four years and seven months before I was able to finish my first book I worked with numerous of artists from concept art to pencils to inks to tones to colors to covers all of that, I was able to work with a lot of different people, make a lot of great connections and move forward in a really great creative journey that I was 
that I was blessed to be a part of. If I really hadn't come across Carstafona on topwebcomics.com and I hadn't come across Samurai Genji on DeviantArt, which actually, now that I think about it, I came across both of them on DeviantArt because I was looking for artists to commission. I don't know where I would be with my story. I'd, I'd probably be still fumbling around with the first script that I had ever wrote and looking at it, thinking to myself, could I do it? So to have my inspiration be somewhat linked to them on top of the fact of having people doubt me and tell me that creating a book by yourself, especially a comic book when you're not the artist, can be such a strenuous task, kind of lit a fire in me as well to say, well, you know what? If you told me I couldn't do it, I think I might have to prove you wrong. So then that's when I actually found Leah Perone, aka pchan.deviantart.com. Check her out. She's actually a co worker or co partner with Samurai Genji's creator, Jeff Trebs, in the studio called AGL Studios. So check them out. And you can also check out Shillin on shillin.com or just search Carsafona. C-A-R-C-I-P-H-O-N-A or S-H-I-L-I-N Finder. Check out both of their works. They're phenomenal artists. And again, I really, really, really don't owe them a lot, but it's just kind of funny that they were the tipping scale for me. And then I wouldn't have never been able to find the slew of other artists or even have been on this road to want to be an independent writer or creator to meet all these other people in this great and wonderful independent community. So when I found Leah, I was able to actually get her to uh, help me develop the entire first cast of Infinite The Journey Volume 1, which were the Guardians, which were which was Ko, the Guardians, uh, Zathor, Shinko, Anai, Latian, and Towson, and then also the main protagonist of Eros. And then also there was a secret antagonist that we created too, but I'm still toying with the fact that I'm going to bring him in because I didn't know the fate of Infinite, the journey with Volume 2 and beyond. Once those characters were created, I put them on the wall in front of me and said, I'm going to make you come to life. I have no choice. I have to. Now that I've put money into the game, aka putting skin into the game, it's now it's time to work, it's time to grind. So I never looked back from that. I started writing a script and the script was so weird compared to how I write them now because I try to find my own little style and format and flair with writing scripts. I don't know why I believe scripts have to look pretty anyway. They shouldn't. They should just be scripts to do their job of transferring the words to the artist to turn it into art anyway. Nobody's ever going to see them but myself, yet I find myself spending time... <laughs> doing just that. Infinite the Journey for me was something that was really inspired by me wanting to tell my own tale but being inspired by a lot of movies, a lot of manga, a lot of anime, a lot of comics, and a lot of animation that I got to watch over the years. And I would always have this mindset of thinking up the story and the concept in my head before I've even seen it or while I'm watching it and then when the ending happens and everything's all said and done my mind is blown because i'm like this is not what i thought this is not what i expected so then i kept thinking to myself if that's how i'm going to perceive certain stories and certain things why not go out there and try to create my own why not little did i know there was millions of other people in the world that felt the same way that i did they just didn't get on the big grand platform and again i was still oblivious to a lot of this so i did it you know i went out and um I created it. It was inspired because my father was a um, farmer in Mississippi and to watch him go from nothing to something and to be able to give life to me to allow me to go on forward doing what I'm doing is where the inspiration really just goes forward and goes through and through for me. So that's where K.O.'s story comes into play. He's a farmer. He's okay with his normal life. He's okay with not being anything greater than that, taking care of his family and moving forward. Little did he know destiny was going to knock on his door and say, you were meant to be more. There were some unfortunate events and circumstances that came along with that, but still, it's a journey that he had to partake upon to become infinite. And that's where the title came from. You know, never placing limits upon yourself to become infinite, to be great, which is where my slogan comes in of greatness lives within. So a lot of personal inspiration and aspiration and meaning about myself is what went into the title and infinite it's a story that may not be deemed great by those who consume a lot of comics or manga that are familiar with the genre and the the things that they would see in infinite but for the other people that have read it they got to see me in it they got to feel what my heart and soul was put into that and it wasn't my best work which is why it's like the best is yet to come but it was still my best work because it was my first work it was innocence in there that was pure it was just me 
trying not trying too hard but just me giving an honest effort which is what makes it so great now that many people outside of the circle of independent comic creators are enjoying it or that read it and want to support my dream so now that that's happened i can never look back i i have to go forward and also i started to do this story because i know that there are other people in the world like me that never got the chance to create or never got over that fear that obstacle or never found the time to do so and it's like if I can be a testament to if I can do it, you can, or you have no excuse but to pursue it, then you will. I may not win that fight with everybody. I may not reach that. That message may not reach everyone I need to reach it to, and it may not reach them in the right way. I rubbed people the wrong way in all my years of creating, and I don't regret any of it. You know, people are going to be people. I can't save everybody. I can't be, get along with everybody. I'm not going to be liked by everybody, and that's fine. And my creativity will not be stunted by another because of their own miscued visions or their opinion or their mindset. So I wanted to be a person that could try to be that example or just for people to stumble upon me and go, holy crap, he did it. Why can't I? Just like how I came across Shillin and Carsophona and said, wow, if they're doing it, why can't I? So I want to do that, but I want to make it the forefront for me being an inspirational person while I'm on this journey of creating and hoping that these stories can carry me for the rest of my life as I can continue to create them to show the world and to inspire others. That's my reason. That's my purpose. And that's what Indie Heroes is going to be me taking all the independent projects that i found highlighting them shedding my review on them or things that i liked about them and stuff and just letting people know that they're there and that hey i'm here and that i appreciate what you've done and i love it and i'll support it till i can't support it anymore that's what indie heroes is going to be about for me i thought about making it a podcast but happened to try to get people's schedules together to figure out things didn't really work for me so what i'm gonna do is I'm going to read the stories, refresh myself, open up the mic, and talk about it. Put pictures up for you to see it, put links up for you to see it, and hope that you like it just as much as I did, if not love it, and hopes that it will continue to make others find other people and become inspired. It may not be my stories, but somebody's story will inspire someone and give that spark and interest. That's the plan, and that's what's really going to go down. So I just hope you stick around for the ride and I hope you enjoy it as you take flight with me. That's pretty much the end of it. And if you don't know my manifesto and my outro, it goes like this. Creatively, I look to inspire the world through my eyes and become a pillar of light for all dreamers. Why? Because greatness lives within. It begins with you, it ends with you, but most importantly, it starts with you. The world's waiting. Now go show them why you're great. One hero, signing in to take off. Peace.